race of aliens is really the most common depiction of aliens that you see. Not only a all for you. So a pea brain is a and universe a hand in different hand dimensions. Place itself yeah. on my, my right to Mars. China. And my immediate thought is he yes, spent two years working hand. with extraterrestrial beings exactly during his time, his time with the American military. The arena is the uh, the hyperspace. This I little girl is me, and you told somebody that she's dead. Wait a minute, wait a minute. They were using real You didn't disappear? I'm right here, I'm right here, I'm right here, I'm right here. Okay, and we are on. This is End of Things. Hi, Ying Dave. Yeah, hi, Stephen. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's good. Been... You feeling all right? Yes, just tired from lack of sleep. And that's because of all the eclipse hype that's been keeping you I away. doubt it. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> it's the anxiety and noise from the fake bikers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we, we love those fake bikers. I... Oh, how do I? <laughs> Yo, it's like um, kind of hoping that they will just move out, but um, it's not going to happen. Oh, they'll be co tagged out. Yeah, they're never leaving. Will they have a stroke uh, from playing too many video games? That could be. Yeah, dun dun dun. <laughs> but, um. Gregory Peck, Lee Remick, The Omen. No! If this is the truth, where does it end? You're doing the omen. Anything that happens on that film, you don't tell about the jokes, you don't tell about the love stories, you don't even think about it, but you think about anything that coincidentally could have been something to do with the omen. So we had lots of them. There were all kinds of incidents during the shooting of this film, and, film, and the newspapers thought we made them up. I, I found this is a fascinating subject, and I wanted to talk about this for a long time. And it, it... Yes, it should, it should have a theremin in the background. I think anybody could make some sounds on a theremin. Yeah, I guess so. It's kind of like um, it's just moving. you just move your fingers, yeah. and hands up the thing, and go. Woo! <laughs> yeah, that was um, they used it a lot in the B movies in the fifties. Oh yeah, in the sixties too. Is it, yeah, was it William Castle type of movies or Roger Corman? Yeah, Roger Corman. Yeah. He had some good ones. Yeah, well, he was he was kind of the the, the one who understood what people wanted and uh, yep. could, could make them for very little money and he, he launched some big careers especially in the the 70s jack nicholson and uh his first movie was the terror if you remember that one yes but um none of these movies had curses but um we wanted to talk about several films uh, and the funny thing is these movies the omen poltergeist exorcist Rosemary's Baby. They they all have something in common. They're all horror movies. Yeah, it's Pretty been uh, the Church of Satan. Church of Satan probably has something to do with that, with the curses. Yeah, I I don't know. I mean that that that's that's if we're taking a standpoint that they're actually real and not actually just there for um for publicity purposes. But um, no, uh, they're real. That, that, well, that, I had dealings with some people. There are things that 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 certainly happened that were tragedies. Um, but uh, but this is what we can just talk about is is to try and figure out how did these movies just purely by subject matter alone. I mean, if you look at the Omen, that's about the devil, uh, the offspring of the devil, which I don't believe in. So did you? Uh, oh, which actually, which one's first? I think Rosemary's Baby was the first one of these movies to come out. Sixty, uh, sixty-eight. Either eight or nine. Sixty-seven. Sixty-seven. Oh, 67. It was the, oh, the book came out in sixty-seven. Yeah, the movie was I think sixty-nine. Sixty-nine makes sense. It was the year. Nice number. Sixty-eight. Oh yeah, it's a great number. It's uh, <laughs> it, it's yeah, it's comfortable. Yes, yeah, certain Doesn't... connotations for that number. Everybody gets something out of it. But uh, Rosemary's Baby actually was 68, but that uh, that's okay. Um, it, it didn't take long for them to to take the movie from the book, you know, because it was just one year. But uh, that was uh, produced by William Castle, who was one of the producer directors who was really into creating buzz and marketing. Paramount Pictures presents Mia Farrow in a William Castle production, Rosemary's Baby. 
Co-starring John Cassavetes, Ruth Gordon, Sidney Blackmer, Morris Evans, and Ralph Bellamy. Written for the screen and directed by Roman Polanski. From the best-selling novel by Ira Levin. Suggested for mature audiences. I, I think I don't, I don't think Rosemary's Baby had a lot of uh, of uh, curse assigned to it. I don't think. Do you know of anything? No, probably not a lot. Maybe one. There could have been one death involved. It's not like The Omen or even Poltergeist. Wow, Poltergeist. Yeah, Poltergeist is something else. Poltergeist is kind of like a. Um, either it's one huge coincidence, but uh, but with, with yeah, like with Rosemary's Baby, the only person who. Who died was uh, Chrysloff Kormeda, uh, um, who uh, was the um, the composer. He composed Rosemary's Lullaby, which which you can hear right now. Let's just put it in there. La, la, la. It's a little excerpt from Rosemary's Lullaby, and he died. Um, only months after the the movie was released, the composer of Komeda died of a cerebral hemorrhage at the age of 38. So. Uh, maybe the evil spirits didn't like that. They, they didn't like the melody. It's kind of a... The, the only coincidence about the cerebral hemorrhage death was that it was this exact same death that uh, Rosemary's character's friend Hutch, he died of that in the movie. Um, no coincidence. But uh, I think that's coincidence because a lot of people can die of cerebral hemorrhage and die young. But um, yeah, apparently there was demonic qualities in the music. I've listened to it um, and I'm still alive, but I guess... They didn't uh, get you. They try. Oh, but, uh, they try all the time. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, scary music is not uncommon in, in horror films and especially lullabies, anything that's, that has a reference to innocence. In fact, the film The Innocence had a... A similar tune. Do you know? I don't that? remember that movie. Do you know that movie? That's that was the the first children are evil uh, movie that I think came out ever really. Um, if you want to discount the Wizard of Oz. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a weird one, the Wizard of Oz. But um, but going back to Rosemary's Baby. I think the one thing that everybody latched onto when it came to Rosemary's Baby, but not necessarily right at the time for for um, publicity, was the whole Sharon Tate murder. Charles Manson thing. Yeah, and, and and kind of linking Charles Manson to the idea of of that and connecting that with Rosemary's Baby is a bit is a bit of a reach. You know, they both work on different planes. I think Rosemary's Baby was a little bit chilling. Yeah. Did you did you see that? Um, oh no, you were yeah. really too young. I'm not, yeah, I didn't see it when it came out. No, no. But I eventually saw it. Yeah. I think, it's a bit chilling. I think Mia Farrow sell, sells fear pretty well. She's uh, yeah. She she had that down, and I think a lot a of shaky. Yeah, sh very vulnerable. Maybe she had a precognition of marrying Woody Allen. Because uh, what about John Cassavetes? He was married to Mia Farrow in that movie. That's it. I remember. Yeah, he. You see, that's the thing. Lots of duplicity with him. Yeah, and you know when it comes down to it, you know a lot of these stories and things that happened, you know, for to to say that there was any curse assigned to Rosemary's Baby, it, it's is just purely um, external, nothing to do with the movie at all. Yes, I agree with that. One person becomes successful because of it, and somebody else has a strange marriage to Woody Allen. You can't really call that a curse. <laughs> <clears throat> But um, no, not at all. Yeah, so uh, but the almond does the almond, the almond, the almond, the almond, the almond. The omen, yes. So let's just let. So we're gonna say that Rosemary's Baby not a cursed movie. Okay, I'm, I'll I, go along with that. I'm calling it. I'm calling it. It's not cursed. Uh, but the omen, you reckon that was? Yes. For generations. The Thorns have been a family of tremendous wealth, position, and power. The perfect marriage of Ambassador Robert Thorne and his wife Catherine was fulfilled by the birth of their son, Damien. And then, when the child was five years old, something terrible happened. And then, it happened. 
happened again. Was it an accident? Was it murder? Was it a coincidence? Or was it an omen? Look at me, Damien. It's all for you. Just by the storyline of what went on in the movie. Yeah, very much so. Like the, the photographer and all that weird stuff that happened. Yeah, I love that. That part of the story itself. Yeah, me too. Uh, the, the whole precognition of, of seeing... Yeah. The, seeing the, yeah, the precognition lines. pictures in actual pictures fantastic yeah when you yeah. saw the picture of the thing of i don't know what it was it was just a line going right through his neck yeah. in a and that scene was great too yeah i think the uh the nanny hanging herself of course is the most famed scene of of, of the whole movie i still like the the photographer I, yeah. That was my favorite part. The de decapitation. Yeah, and that's, because the picture had it going through his neck, and that's how he died. That's where we can start off with our first curse, um, the first uh, thing that happened um, to um, Liz Moore, who actually was the sculptor for Two Thousand One, uh, Clockwork Orange, and she also worked on the Omen. I believe she worked on that decapitated head of um, David Warner. I believe yes. And um, she she worked on a lot of things. She was very well known, and she was working on a film, A Bridge Too Far, just after she wrapped on the Omen. And, That's a war uh, movie. Yeah, they were doing. They were driving across uh, the Netherlands of all places, and um, she died in a head-on collision. She was cut in half by the other vehicle's wheel, um, which I don't know how that would have happened. I mean, that's that's an insane accident. Um, and, and apparently there is that, that mirroring of what happened to the photographer in the omen. Whether it was cut right through or whether she just had a wheel sticking in her it is, you know, you know, I think a lot of it is probably embellished just for the, uh, the sake of the story. But the points that... Isn't that always the case? It, it might be the case, but uh, here, here are a few things that, that stuck out from this one. The fact that she was decapitated was one. She died on the Friday the Thirteenth, which if you're if you're superstitious, superstitious, which I'm not. Are you superstitious? No trisk. I mean, let me say the word triskaidekaphobia. I don't have that. You don't have it. That's fear of the number thirteen. Yeah, I I don't I don't see the number thirteen as being anything uh, out of the ordinary. Um, I do, but not in a bad way. Back in the old days, thirteen was supposed to be a great number. But isn't that the Maybe way? Thousands of years. Isn't that the way with anything that's that's uh, that there's always a polar opposite for everything that is evil? The swastika. So in, yeah. yeah. Well, the swastika was, was, was in India was a great thing and meant uh, good luck and stuff like that. Yeah, and, and I'm trying not to curse either. No, 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 no. You can't curse. I'm either. saying stuff, and I know I can't. But instead of saying what I usually say, I, I'm saying stuff. The other interesting fact about her death was uh, that she died um, on the way to Omen. That's on the way to Omen. O double M E N, a place in the Netherlands called Omen. And not only that, she was exactly now. This is where it becomes a little bit more embellished. I think she died at the marker, um, which which there was a there's apparently a signpost marker that says 66.6 kilometers away from Omen. Coincidence, huh? Um, I think uh, I, I have a friend who works in digital cartography, and they they drive all these routes quite regularly. And I sent him a message uh, the other day asking about the whole: is you know, do you have markers for cities that are so specific that they would actually be marked as sixty six point six kilometers? And he said, absolutely not. Um, they would it, they would only do, do do markers when they're rounded, when it's a round number embellish them yeah so there is uh, as far as i'm concerned and and somebody out there needs to prove me wrong there is no such thing as a 66.6 kilometer marker for omen in the netherlands if they had to throw something in evil or supposedly evil i don't believe in that either 666 six, six. it's always hard to believe you know i, I think you know I, i'm i don't know i'm a, are you an atheist uh more 
agnostic than atheist. But yeah. I think there has to be a creator. Yeah, I, I think I'm on the same wavelength there. I mean, I, I don't want to kind of say either way in, in it strongly, but I'd being being Johnny Switzerland in the middle there is is a little bit easier to to kind of deal with, I think. And I'm I'm the same. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, but uh, I have to believe in a creator, the creator of the universe, because uh, it's too perfect not to be created. It has that dark matter that's yeah. holding the galaxies together. Exactly, and for every action, there is an immediate reaction. So if the reaction was the creation of the universe, what was the action that preceded it? Stephen Hawkins? <laughs> I don't know about him. Stephen Hawkins, where are you? Come on. Nobody, you won't be calling any time soon. Nobody knows the answer to that one. Yeah, that's the problem. They're working on what I think is complete bullshit, string theory. <laughs> oh, string theory is, is funny. It's um, the, Especially the way they, they, they represent it in, um, in documentaries. I don't know if you've seen any of the, um, the very uh, Talk to Me Like I'm a 12-year-old documentaries where they try and explain string theory to you. Um, no, yeah. I haven't seen that. I've, I've heard it explained, and I don't buy it. I don't know. I don't know. It's. Um, I think it's. They just, said that's how the universe was created. String theory created the universe. I, I don't buy that. It's yes. still all linked in with the you know the fabrics of the universe and the fact that you know it, we've kind of decided that there has to be a, a good and an evil, and, it, it, and it's all it's all about control. It's in control of the people, but. Um, but curses, yeah. Brainwashing is more like it. And that, and that's what a curse is. It's pretty much giving somebody, if you believe something enough, you can make it happen. That kind of a thing. Yeah, it manifests. Yeah, and that's that's kind of how I believe a curse is. If somebody tells you that you're gonna, that you've got a curse and your your firstborn will be will suffer, then you will find a way to make that firstborn suffer. You know, because how can you not? You know. Yeah, but I, I think mainly curses. If they're put on people, mm. they're not told that they're being cursed. Not necessarily. Yeah, yeah, that's true. There's, there's always the, um, the unknown um, element to it that uh, I don't know, and that's that's where it becomes a little bit obscure, and it, it's like I have no answer for that one. No, well, there's rituals. There's, that's why it's called black magic. You know, the dark arts. They have rituals for all kinds of things, and one of them is placing curses. Yeah. So if you're cursed, you might not know it. Yeah, I don't know. Am I cursed? Are you? Do you feel cursed? Uh, at times, absolutely. <laughs> and do you think somebody put a curse on you? I'm not sure, but it could be. Does it have to be someone you know, or can it be indirect, um, completely anonymous? Both. I'm open to both those options. Okay. But I think it might be somebody I know, or knew, don't know anymore unloaded them just passed on or somebody somebody who unloaded me yeah well then we can go into the whole theory of anonymism and shamanism and the actual energy is just where whatever you walked into and it has nothing to do with anybody specifically that, that, that's uh, another possibility yes i okay. think we should get back to the omen let's get back to the omen before we open that can of worms and uh, into another can um, yeah, that's a whole episode in itself there, there's another incident during the Omen, um, a, uh, a plane ride that was scheduled to be taken by Richard Donner and his camera crew over London. They'd, they'd um, hired out this private jet, not private jet, but private plane, just a small plane, to shoot some aerial footage um, for the Omen. And, uh, they, Didn't they get hit by lightning? Um, no, but um, oh, somebody did uh, say that their a airplane was struck by lightning when they flew from London to Los Angeles before the premiere. But that's, uh, I reckon, that's just embellished. You know, everybody, everybody has incidents on airplanes. But this one was a small plane, and they'd been given a, an offer that they couldn't refuse. Uh, they got, they got Richard Donner got called up by the uh, the plane private plane company and said, uh, listen. Um, we've been given a, a, a larger sum of money to uh, reschedule. Um, is it okay if we can just take your schedule? Uh, we've got some uh, Chinese businessmen who who have expressed an absolute desire to take the flight that you've booked. Uh, would it be all right to to push your booking to another day, um, and we'll give you a huge discount? 
And Richard Donner said yes, because you know saving money on a film is really important. So they they were able yeah. to do that. Um, I get that. So basically, the plane carrying all these Chinese businessmen, um, cr it, it crashed. It uh, it hit the deck. It had problems in the air, and it hit the deck, and uh, and uh, all all occupants died um, upon impact. So there were nine of them on board. And um, yeah, so that there's there's that that happened um, during the filming. Um, coincidence, huh? Coincidence. It's tricky. It's tricky that one. Um, who were these? Chinese I don't businesses? really believe in coincidences. Yeah, but then I'm I'm thinking who? I were believe they? in its setups and fate. Yeah, fate. I can kind of lead myself to because I think you know we all walk into our own plan destinies you know there's there's always something that um that can be you know there's a pattern to everything but uh, there's no record of who these chinese businessmen were or who was actually on board the plane at the time um only just brief newspaper footage of showing an airplane that had crashed so um i'm kind of thinking that that was probably bullshit I'm calling bullshit yeah, on this story that because be. that uh, they actually didn't book it, but they were actually making the film. An air aircraft had crash landed. They they planned to do a, an aerial uh, flyover of London, or actually had done a, an aerial flyover, and they just thought, "Hey, well, wouldn't it be great if we just pretended that this was actually we actually booked this flight?" Um, so a part of me kind of thinks because none of the crew and none of them were actually affected by it, it just seems like it's too, too separate to actually be anything to do with it. And I think they were just looking at it as, as a selling point, which Richard Donner had admitted that um, to a certain extent that um, a lot of things did happen. Um, and they said, well, let's just abuse it. Let's use it and uh, get it out there uh, because it's going to help sell our movie. Are, are they omens because is there something bigger uh, i say no it's just incredible coincidence um there are those that would like to think about it and that it's something more and when the publicity department and fox got their hands on it we all said yes it's the omen because we're selling our movie yep nothing but marketing but so with, with the omen curse um these things of course they happened but um whether it's it's tied in with the fact that that, that there is a curse do you believe that yeah believe it or not when it comes to making these movies about the evil, mm. the evil spirits all around. And they're all just... Now I'll tell you about the Church of Satan. Church of Satan. They consider, they, they consider people like you and me the dead because we don't know what they know. Well, yeah. I mean, that that's... But then anybody who watches Games of Thrones will tell you the same thing. If you, if someone comes up to me and says, you haven't seen an episode, anything of Games of Thrones, I said, no, I haven't, then they'll probably look at me and say, oh, you're dead to me. You know? <laughs> I mean, that's, if anybody is a deep believer of anything or obsessed about anything, and I use obsession in a more of a less personal term, um, then they're going to think that you're nuts because you don't know it. He says, if you guys go ahead and make this movie, before you are done, you will believe the devil exists. And he was absolutely right, because uh, as I'm sure the other fellows have told you, so many bizarre things happen. It's almost as if somebody didn't want this picture to be made, because the number one lie of the devil is that he doesn't exist. Did evil win? Uh, if you believe... Yes, did we have a lot of problems with a lot of religious nuts who said you can't have the evil win over over good because it's the devil? Yes, we had that. Um, but if you have those that believe the material as I did, that this was just a lost little child who was adopted in a hospital, um, and that Gregory Peck had to be totally insane at that last moment of his life, or, life for, or, or how else can he drive a knife into a child? It had to be that if you had that attitude, then the child lived. And, uh, but did, 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 did evil win over good? That's your choice. So, yes, yeah, so let's move on to The Exorcist then, because um, The Exorcist, again, a movie that, of course, people are going to believe is cursed because the same reasons of the omen. You know, you're working with dark, dark subject matter. 
Yeah, evil spirits possessing somebody. Yes, and and this time it's a girl appro uh, uh, approaching puberty. You know, it's it's the whole, you know, how can you, uh, how can you pull this girl out of this mo this this terrifying moment of her life and and mark her with the sign of the devil. You know. I seen this movie with a girl, and we were teenagers, and she was freaking out during the whole movie. Oh yeah, how, and so how I did. I covered her eyes, and she pu pushes my hands away. It says, this is scaring the shit out of you, and you keep on watching it. Yeah, I want to see it. I guess people like being scared. That's it, yeah. I mean, I, I never got that opportunity to see it in the cinema. I watched it for the first time on VHS in a restaurant uh, after closing. Yeah, not a place to see it. We watched it. No, we actually, we, we put it on a, a, a videotape machine in the child section, in the kids section, the Charlie Chork corner, and it had all these puppets hanging from the ceiling. And uh, we all watched it after we finished our shift. It was, we closed the restaurant down and we watched it there. We watched it twice. Uh, nice because, ambience uh, for the movie. Well, it was... It the was, ambience it, for children. <laughs> It was. I find it fine. It was brilliant. Uh, it was probably the best way to watch it. It was still banned in this country, and I think this, the 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 video raconteur that I used to buy video VHS tapes from he uh, he had this uh, this kind of a wheeze, uh, and he said, "You you you have to watch this movie." And I, and I said, "Sounds like he smokes a lot." <laughs> but he let me watch it he, he lent it to me um and i i took it straight to the work and uh, they were all excited and just wanted to sit there and watch it twice um so but i, I never yeah, you should watch it twice because yeah. you the second time you miss some things that the first time you've seen it exactly oh you know, i don't remember that oh, wow and i just seen it we we, uh, we did a, a frame by frame episode on the exorcist and it was uh we we, we wanted to talk about the whole all of the films and uh because the later ones were just ridiculous absolutely awful um you know that first movie stood all on its own all the other sequels paled in comparison um because the exorcist movie was was not just a film it wasn't something that was it was more than just a story it was it was it was an existential existence of that yeah, it's movie supposed that... to be about. It's supposed to be real. Yeah, it... something that actually happened. Well, it was based on a, on the story, of course, uh, which which is where, you know, that they they're probably assuming that, that 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 a lot of things happened. I mean, that there was a fire. Um, on the set, um, which delayed filming and um and apparently. Coincidence. Yeah, and um. The, 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 I'm being sarcastic. The, the set was caught. Well, you're being sarcastic. That's that's, yeah. that's my personality. The, uh, the the shooting was delayed because the set caught fire, but apparently, it was a pigeon that found its way into one of the circuit boxes where um, and that caused the fire. Just a just a fat pigeon got in. But uh, William Friedkin, when he um, when when the news broke and it became uh, public knowledge, he blamed the incident on a winged creature with talons. So. Oh. There you go with the hyperbole. There you go. So they can't sell the movie, as, 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 no matter what condition. Just make it. something up to sell it. You probably know as much about possession as most priests. Look, your daughter doesn't say she's a demon. She says she's the devil himself. I'm telling you that that thing upstairs isn't my daughter. Now, I want you to tell me that you know for a fact that there's nothing wrong with my daughter except in her mind. The one hope. The only hope. The exorcist. Oh, we never got to the score on The Exorcist. How about... Tubular bells. Tubular bells. Well, yeah. I mean, there, there's nothing assigned to that as a curse. Um, I can, I can almost, I can almost play it on, um, on the piano. Um, but it's it, because it's all about repetition. Yeah, um, it definitely is. I find it hard to kind of be consistent in repetition when I'm playing the piano. That's which is why Angel Witch is so, so enjoyable to play. Because it changes. And you do it good. 
Oh, it could be better. I need to do the full length. I didn't get the full length yet. No. You got to give me that when you do it. Yeah, like well, the sound of your piano. Um, Poltergeist. Oh, yeah, we're supposed to get to that. So, so that's Pol- a cur- cursed movie from the Indian burial ground, the sacred land. The house looks just like the one next to it. And the one next to that. And the one next to that. A young couple live in it. Give Ken a kiss. <laughs> you are so obnoxious. With their three children. <laughs> and something more. Sweetie, remember last night? Do you remember when you woke up and you said you were here? Uh-huh. Well, who did you meet? Who's here? TV people. Something's funny going on here next door. Something, uh... We were wondering if maybe you had experienced any disturbances lately. What kind of disturbances? I don't know what happens over this house. Yeah, the um, Poltergeist 1982, Steven Spielberg directing, of course, um, which, you know, it's strange for him to actually have a film that is assigned to to being a cursed movie. Um, It's one of the most talked about cursed movies above that of um, Omen because it's because it's a Spielberg movie. A lot of people have seen it. It's a lot more accessible, I think. Um, I'm not surprised at all because. He gets lots of, a lot of these filmmakers get their ideas and topics from, from people sense. who are in the cabal. What's, um, you know, at least, at least he's researching, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> it doesn't, you know, I, I guess a lot of things you have to keep confidential when you're, when you're a filmmaker. And if you want to be a successful filmmaker, this, this, this stuff. Oh, yeah. You've got to keep, keep things from people, you know, feed them little by little. But um, now, like, you end up like Stanley Kubrick. Oh. After he did uh, Eyes Wide Shut, yeah, I think Stan- he was exposing what the Cabal does. Yeah, Eyes Wide Shut. I saw that in the theater, and I, I, I actually didn't question any of it. I just thought it was uh, it, this was just you know I knew about secret sex societies and that uh, whatnot, but uh, it never really, it never really concerned me. I, I, I kind of thought, yeah, I, if that happens, you know, so what, you know. It's, you know, I, the worst things happen, I'm sure. So let's go to the Poltergeist, and of course... Poltergeist. Poltergeist. Um, classic movie. Um, love it, you know, love it for what it is. It's not a Poltergeist movie, because there are actually... You know, I've, I've talked about this in another podcast, where I, 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 I don't think it should be called Poltergeist, because you actually see things, you know, you see the monsters and... I know a lot of it's hallucination, but um, poltergeist to me is something you can't see, and yet we see. I it. think it's real, though. Poltergeists. Happen. Yeah, sacred Indian burial ground. The spirits are still there. Yeah, I, and that's what that was about. I mean, the um, the uh, sequel. I don't know. I can't remember at all because I don't. I didn't pay attention to whether they used a, a sacred burial ground again. But uh, in the first one they did, and um, there it, it chalked up quite a few deaths, Poltergeist. <laughs> it chalked it up. Um, unfortunately, but but it seems that Steven Spielberg, Craig T. Nelson, um, the other lady whose name I can't remember, and Ten- who played Tangine, um, they all kind of just carried on, you know. But uh, unfortunately, Dominic Dunn, Heather O'Rourke. Um, um. That's sad. She was so young. The murder of Dominique Dunn. Dominique Dunn was destined to enter show business. Her father was author Dominic Dunn, and her brother was actor Griffin Dunn. And Sweeney was known as uh, having a hot temper, and uh, a lot of Dominique's friends didn't really care for him very much. By the summer of 1982, Dominique became the target of Sweeney's violent outbursts. Sweeney beat the crap out of him. She thought she was going to die. 
He choked her unconscious, banged her head on the floor, did all this. I, I was absolutely blown away. I couldn't believe it. So yeah, Do Dominic Dunn, uh, sister of Griffin Dunn. That's quite a, 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 a acting dynasty right there. Her, f her father was a producer also called Dominic. Um, but uh, she was murdered not, not long after the release of the movie. And she was very pretty. Police report states that Packer came outside and saw Sweeney kneeling over Dominique in the next door neighbor's yard. At some point, the police arrived and plucked him out from the driveway. Police reports state that Sweeney told the deputies, I've killed my girlfriend. Yeah, she, she was a very young actress, starting out of her career. A teenager. And she was good. She was very good at what she did. And um, unfortunately, she had this crazed boyfriend, Sweeney. Uh, they broke up just before she started working on Hill Street Blues, after she'd finished uh, filming Poltergeist. And in that he should have been jail jailed before, th th before they that. broke up. Exactly, um, because he'd already beaten her. Uh, so much so that when she actually uh, took the role as an abused mother um, in Hill Street Blues, they didn't need to put any makeup on her. Um, Perfect character, too, yeah. because she's been through it. And she's been through it, and I, I saw the scene today, and, and she... she She's heartbreaking in that episode of Hill Street. Glad I didn't see it. Do you ever have a kid? What difference does it make? You never had some baby keep crying on you when you did everything you were supposed to. So you left him out in the street? I put him in a cop car. I knew he'd get took care of. Oh, you knew that, huh? Yeah. Your baby cries, so out he goes. You don't pick him up, you don't hug him. I was gonna hit him! It was going to be just like my mama did to me. There's so much reality in her performance. And of course, it was just one month before uh, she was murdered. Well, that, that's the reason I don't like Hollywood and TV and all that, which is all the same thing. Because they're looking to push the emotions out of you. That's it. No, that's that's, that's what, what, what they want. But acting is, is that. You know, it's... it's um, but unfortunately, in, in her case, it was too, it's too close to home. Hello. They're here. Sweetie, remember last night? Do you remember when you woke up and you said yeah. you were here? Uh-huh. Well, who did you mean? Who's here? The TV people. Heather O'Rourke. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, misdiagnosed um, for having Crohn's disease. Um, she died of a cardiac arrest caused by, um, oh, is it, um, septic shock. Septic shock brought on by congen congenital stenosis. Um, stenosis. That's a mouthful. Yeah, that's a few drinks. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you try competing with that, Ying. I mean, that's, that's a lot of, that's a lot of ailments. I'd rather not. And, no, no. I got enough problems. Yeah, this, this, this basically brought that young girl down. I mean, she was, they were giving her, um... Um, drugs in order to control Crohn's disease, which was the reason why in the third movie, Poltergeist 3, she she had a, a puffy cheeks. They noticed that there, there was a, a puffiness to her cheeks, which is the, the how how the drug was affecting. It was a side effect of the drug. A lot of drugs do that. What, whatever happened in her intestines just caused a cardiac arrest, and that was it. Gone. At such a young age. Like I say, there was a few other deaths. The uh, uh, Julian Beck, who played the old man, Cain, who was the preacher, the malevolent tr uh, preacher who appeared in, in the second movie. He died of cancer. Are you lost, sweetheart? Are you afraid, honey? Well, why don't you come with me? No. All right. I'll sing you a song till your mom. God is it, his holy town. Earthly thoughts be silent now. Um, oh, of course, and um, Lou Lou Perryman, who played us, he had a small role as, as this as as Pugsley. I don't know who Pugsley was in the original film. Um, Sounds like the Adams family. That's what I thought. I thought I don't remember a character called Pugsley. Maybe he was just one of the kids or something i don't know um no he was 67 years old so he probably was one of the guys who was one of the friends of of the father uh but he was still on, not old yeah he was on the crew of the texas chainsaw massacre and it was a performer in texas chainsaw massacre 2 
he was uh, murdered uh, by an axe by a, a recently released ex-convict who killed him in his own home. Um, Must have not liked the movie. You start to think, when, when you start to look at the curse, was there a connection? Nobody knows. Oh, we ought to do a reverb on that. Should we, should we both go out and do a nobody knows? Was there a connection? Yeah. Nobody, Nobody knows. knows. Oh, that's strong. That's good. You probably, <laughs> you wouldn't have heard it, but it's definitely there on the track. Nobody knows. Wow. So yeah, I heard the last podcast. I heard, I heard the, a reverb thing, which yeah. of course I didn't hear while we were doing it. <laughs> Some of that was post production. I don't think I'm used to hit, hitting the hitting the reverb whilst recording, because I, you know, uh, it, it's it's got to be the right moment. So yeah, I, mean, I think so too. So the one one connection, of course, to all these movies—they're all horror movies, and horror movies, are, I think, are always difficult to promote to a larger audience. And I think that once you kind of get sniff of a, of a curse, then I guess people want to watch the movie. Yep, piques their interest. But but do curses actually exist? I think it's possible. Yeah, we especially with all the ceremonies that go on. And so we're thinking more of a of a human link, maybe to you know an outsider link to it. That there is some sort of an influence, but not necessarily. Um, it could be out, outsider. Could be just a spirit. I mean, if you were if you were a, a person who was deeply concerned, as they were for the Exorcist. I mean, there's a lot of people who refused and 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 protested the idea of that movie coming out. Um, that if they'd gotten gotten wind of it early during the filming, that they would probably have tried to kind of sabotage or uh, commit acts, you know, against the people who made the film. I mean, I, we do know that Linda Blair in The Exorcist, well, she was um, threatened and was assigned bodyguards to the premiere because uh, there was a, 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 a there was fear that there would actually be an attempt on her life. Um, to so. change the subject a little bit. You remember when she got to be like 16, 18 years old? Yes, I remember. Exorcist Two, the heretic, uh, the heretic. I'm talking about the body. Oh, she she grew up. She grew up, and um, and oh boy, did she grow up. And it was it was good for everybody. To quote one Dave Thank Hill, you. especially good for guys <laughs> to look at. Well, she did a she did a good job there. She she grew her own. D cups, at least. <laughs> good job. Good job. Well done. <laughs> Let's commend Linda on 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 that uh, on on the D's. Brilliant. So um, I agree. I, <laughs> so there we go. That, that that's curses, cursed movies, and um, I think we we expelled a few. We we debunked a few, I think. But um, as far as you're concerned, there is still there's there's always the possibility that um, certain things are out of our control. Yes. I'm open-minded. I believe in that. Yeah, and it's how about yeah? How about a, a, this will be another theme for another podcast? Other dimensions, vibrational frequencies that are right in front of us that we can't see. Ing Dave, a whole completely different reality is there, but we can't see it. I I'm already there. Okay. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> but um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, we we've got three topics to cover there. That we've um, that that the whole portals around the world around the planet um the uh the idea of dimensions cross dimensions um, it's not just an idea i think it's fact it's happening it's happening it's out there guys yep it's, i believe that totally <laughs> and you know keep an open mind even top physicists top physicists believe there are many dimensions 10 or 11 but some of them debunk it by saying oh they're too small that's yeah it. but the small ones could be expanded oh. by the reality that's in it who knows? Yeah, there's so much. Time for a, a plug. We've got to plug somebody. You know who we've got to plug. Oh, Dave Hill? Um, well, of course, yeah. Watch the goddamn Dave Hill show. Uh, Ing Dave is, you can't is, watch. Is, <laughs> watch it? Listen. You can't watch. Let's try yeah. the show. Let's, let's re re <laughs> listen, to the goddamn, <laughs> listen to the goddamn Dave Hill show each and every Monday night on WFMU. Um, do, you, do you know the station ID already by heart? Of course. He makes me do it a lot. I know. It's a uh, goddamn Dave Hill show on WFMU, East Orange, WMFU, Mount Hope, 91.9 in Rockland County, and WFMU.org, uh, the world, 
of the matrix. 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 Yes, and I love I love the little the little flare on that the the whole matrix thing. Perfect on the caught in the web. I like that one when you said caught in the web, caught in the world yeah. web. That's that's uh, that's smart. That smart was the first thing. one. Yes, the first one I came up with. And, you should uh, know. You listen to the archives. Yeah, I've, I listen to. I've listened to every single episode. Well, no, almost. I, I I'm catching up slowly. There's a lot of episodes to catch up on. Um, I've got to throw out another shout out to Justin Smith, um, who has very kindly allowed us to use uh, Ing Dave's famed um, Fang. He's Ing great, you know. He's he's an amazing artist. I love. Uh, he's prolific. Yeah, brilliant. Very John Carpenter esque. Some of it, and a lot of it. A lot of it's very. The the hues and colors of his art is is outstanding. He, he does work with some unique palettes, and I I enjoy looking at his at his new work each and every time. So you so can do I. you can find Justin, um, JustinSmithArt.com. That's JustinSmithArt.com, and you can follow him on Twitter, and look for his page on Facebook. The same name, Justin Smith. Art.com. Don't forget Rev Justin Smith. Oh yes, on the Twitter he's he's called Rev Justin Smith, and um, and he's over I call there Rev. in um, Austin, Texas. So uh, yep, one of the coolest cities you could find. Yeah, right, right in the center, right in the heart of the mainland. I, I'm guessing. I don't even know where Austin, Texas is. <laughs> it's probably right on the border somewhere. I don't know. No, it's not bordered, but. It's a really progressive city. Gosh, we're just eating away at this with, with plugs. Um, we should plug our own space. Um, you can listen. Go to, right ahead. You can listen to End of Things, um, hopefully on iTunes now, uh, as you are listening to this. And if you are listening to archives, then we should have gotten onto iTunes by now. Um, YouTube, just go to Roasted Portions channel. Um, which you know, just type in end of things podcast ing dave and you'll find it for sure um we'll throw up links of course ing dave is on the twitter you can tweet him do you want to throw your your handle out or is do you want oh, to my some? handle is black black ing dave one that's right and it, the ing is y and g not i yeah, well, that was a misconception in the beginning when when we first started hearing your calls on on the show. Everybody was saying "ing," I did the same. I thought "ing," so uh, but that's just pronunciation. It's Norwegian named after Ingve Malmsteen. Malmsteen, yes. Malmsteen, see, see, I don't even get the. Yeah, that's why I play the guitar. Yes, and that's why I don't play the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's wrap this up. You've got a you've got a big day ahead of you, so uh, I'm going to wish you a happy Ing Day. Yeah. Your own, Hope you call in. Your own national holiday. I'm going to try. I think I should get some sleep beforehand. Yes, and definitely I'll nap. Nap away, and then I'll I'll get because up. I can't. Because you can't. You can nap for me. Insomnia. Well, it's not really insomnia. It's uh, noise. Noise. <laughs> And I, I have the tinnitus and the hydrocephalus, which amplifies it. So yeah. I'm in good shape. We, we've we've got our battles, Ing. We have our battles, but um, as long I've been as having the battles the whole this whole century since 2003. But you know what? We've got each other, <laughs> and we have we have Dave Hill, and we also have stalkers on Twitter. Yay! <laughs> yes, but uh, I'm losing more than I'm gaining now. You either lose some, you gain some. You know, people drop on, drop off. It's, it's. Uh, As I said, familiarity breeds contempt. That's. I'm sticking with that. We can stick with that. That's far enough. You know, we we gotta we gotta have something to to hold on to, right? <laughs> yeah, that's no, my no. excuse. Focus Not worried on, at all about focus that. on the positive. Come on, you can do it. Focus. Yes. Focus on the. Sometimes positive. I could do that. Do it. Do take care, Ying, and I'll um, I'll speak to you um, hopefully tonight in studio. Yes, very in hopefully studio tonight. A. Yes. You take care. And uh, have a good day with the wife and kid. Yeah. So you can sign off in your usual fashion for the podcast. Oh, okay. Until the next next time, everybody. Good night, fuckers.
never gonna get old.